So hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. When I left you guys last, we were working on the uh, 06 Pontiac G6 flip car. Just to catch you up, if you missed any of it, this is an 06 Pontiac G6 with 184,000 miles. Uh, she was a little rough, but we're getting her all straightened out. We're putting the finishing touches on it now. We ran into some, uh, some issues on the last video. In case you missed it, we found some hidden damage when we pulled the bumper off. This is all pushed back. Uh, it's going to make our headlight not fit properly. And it doesn't give us a mounting point for our radiator. So we got to get all this pulled out. So let's get started on that. Let's get this hood on here. Also, I'm out here kind of messing around right now. So after we get the hood hung on there, we're going to need to put the uh, insulator and, of course, the, the windshield squirters and all that in it. And I'm out here just kind of cleaning up on it. Uh, I've already sprayed it off of the hose. And I'm going back over it with some of my... My satin black spray paint here, we get this from Walmart, about four or five bucks a can. It goes a long ways. I mean, this is like a tall boy for, for spray cans. Uh, I've already done this other half. You can see what a difference that makes. And all I'm doing is I'm just dusting it on here, just really lightly, nothing spectacular. Just wash as much of the dirt away as you can and let it dry for a little while. And then come back and just do this with it. Super easy. Anybody could do it. And it just makes such a big difference. I mean, it makes it look like new again. Uh, I suppose if you wanted to, you could get in here and uh, fix little stuff like this. I wanted to find a one in better condition from the salvage yard, and all the ones out there were even worse. But you could easily get in there and kind of mess with some of that stuff with some kind of some kind of adhesive or something. I don't know. It would you might could put it in there and then lay the stuff back down over it, make it look a little better. If you luck out, maybe you could find one at the salvage yard that's in a little better shape like I tried to and failed, but either way, this makes such a big difference, especially once it's actually under the hood. When you first lift that hood and you see that looking all nice, it, it does make a big difference. Okay, so having that done, we are ready to hang our hood. I know I've explained this in other videos, but hey, it's worth mentioning. Have everything ready. We've got our bolts here already painted, ready to go. I've got my air ratchet already plugged in. It's already spinning the right direction. All we got to do is just get the hood up here, spin some screws into it, and we should be good to go. You can see I've got some protective rags over there in each corner. That should help us out, keep us from scratching anything. Take our hood prop, put it up here where it goes. Now, don't let go of this. All right, we're supported on one side with the prop, but we don't have nothing over here. If you let go, chances are the hood will fall on one side. So you don't want to do that. Typically, what I'll do at this point is I'll come over here to the side that is already supported with the hood lat or the, the hood rod. I'll stay a hold of it, kind of work my way around here. I come over here, I stay a hold of it still. I haven't let go of it one time. I'm gonna take, put the back bolt in. Once that back bolt's in, I could kind of maneuver my hood around until I got the hole lined up. And look at that. Get that screwed in there as much as you can. In this case, it looked like we about got all the way. At this point, the hood ain't going anywhere. It's supported with the rod, obviously. Now that that bolt's in, there's really no way for the hood to, you know, to fall down this way. So now I can let loose. Come on over here. Tighten up this side. Get the bolts in it. And away we go. At this point, I could probably go ahead and take my little rags out of here and get them kind of out of the way. Don't need them anymore. Get the driver's side tightened up now. Let's go ahead and get our rag out of this side too if we can. It's kind of buried down in there. There we go. All right. Did a good job. We're done with you. Now, I know what you're thinking. Weird, weird. Why didn't you paint the bottom of the hood gold like the rest of the car? And I'm going to tell you, I've done this a million times on these old flip cars and nobody cares. This gets me out of it just a little bit cheaper. That's all. The cheaper I could do this stuff, the cheaper I could sell them for, you know, and, and cheating on something like that. Nobody cares. No one has ever, not ever one time showed up and be like, hey, what the hell? Why is this hood black underneath? I mean, it, it just kind of blends with it, I guess. I don't know. And just nobody really notices it. They just, they don't say anything. They don't bat an eye one bit. So that's how I do it. Saves me a little money on, on, on paint. This paint's not cheap. Once it starts to add up, 
and uh, we already had to do the whole side of the car, the bumper, the hood. We had plenty going on already. So anyway, that just makes it a little easier, a little cheaper, that's all. Thought maybe I'd try to make me a little puller out of an old transmission mount. Check it out. Uh, if I had something that would kind of go up in behind here, like so, then we could start pulling out on it. Um, basically what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim this piece off. That way it's just got basically a 90 degree going on here. This flat surface here will hook onto my clamp. This guy right here will be able to uh, clamp onto this and we should be able to do some pulling. So I'm thinking that's going to give me exactly what I need right there. Uh, that should be a good spot for my clamp to clamp onto there. Having that piece out of the way. This is how it'll work basically. Take a big old clamp here and loosen it up just a little bit. We'll slide that bad boy in there just like that. And then we'll tighten her back down. The cool part about this clamp is on the other side, the bolt is inside of this little recessed area so it don't spin on you. And all you need is just one wrench out here and get this all nice and tight. Now also, as you pull on this, the way this is wedge set, the way this wedge works inside of here, this thing is wedged, so as you pull on it, it actually spreads this out, bites into this even tighter. And so what I'm thinking is maybe we'll be able to get kind of up in behind here like so. You know, hook a chain onto that. Maybe we can start working some of this out of here. So I thought before we did anything, maybe I'd get this guy right here, a little slide hammer. Uh, not exactly the right attachment. I need something more with like a little 90 degree angle on the end of it But I think this will work just to kind of start working this outer layer off Well, we got we got multiple layers going on here. Uh, this outer layer isn't very thick and I think maybe I could Kind of pull a little bit on that with this. Let's see what happens. Oh Yeah, there we go. See it's already moving Let's try to hit that one more time. See what happens you can see where all that's pushed in. We need to make it look like this side. You see where it's got that bracket attached to it? And it's all flat in this area. That's what we need in this area as well. Something else you might could do is just go ahead and put a, a bolt in there. Screw it in quite a bit. You know, you want the threads to go all the way through. And then now maybe we could grab onto this and pull out a little bit. Get my favorite puller here. You guys following along know I love this one with the vice grip on the end of it comes in pretty handy. You can see here, same situation for anybody that don't know, just a little slide hammer with vice grips welded on the end. You can buy these if you want, they're not very expensive. I made this one quite a few years ago and it has served me well. Let's see if we can pull this out. You gotta be careful because we don't wanna break that loose. That, that All that is really is just a nut welded to the sheet metal and from the back side and we don't wanna break it loose because we need that. So we're not gonna get too carried away with this. In fact, we may just do a little bit and then go back to the other method we was doing just a minute ago. You can see that is coming out very well though. So at this point it would probably be a good idea since that, that actually came out very well. I'm impressed. I wasn't expecting to get that far with that. Uh, you want to come in and kind of tap down the high spot. This here has a bit of a, what we call an eyebrow. And all that is is when a spot goes in, the area around it tends to kind of pucker up. So you want to kind of get in there and kind of work some of that down. And you want to do that after you've kind of relieved the pressure and, and pulled the low spot out. Not getting super carried away we're just tapping around on it and now we're going to do a little more pulling and you'll just kind of do that back and forth until you get it out where you want it here's the actual bracket that goes in that spot you can see it's just slightly bent that needs to be more of a 90 degree angle this one's easy so this won't take but a couple taps with a hammer We'll tap around on this a little more with the hammer to make it look a little nicer. I just want to get an idea of how far away we are. Okay, so I've got this pretty much figured out now. 
Uh, both the brackets are fitting. I went ahead and did the other side. Got it bent to where it is now in the bracket like it's supposed to be, as well as this side. Uh, they're both so that now the radiator is secure like it's supposed to be. We're gonna go ahead and mount this headlight on this side, and then I'm gonna mount the headlight over on this side, the one we got from the salvage yard, and see how far off we are. Let's get this in here, see what we're working with. See about getting this guy in here now. There we go. So here's the moment of truth. I've got both headlights in on both sides. I've made all my adjustments. You can see right here, I did have to push that fender in just a hair, nothing major. Everything else is fitting up good. We've got our brackets like we showed you. I did pull the hood latch out. I've showed you guys in other videos. Uh, take your latches out when you're trying to adjust your panels. Make the panels fit first, and then you go back and put your latches in. So there's your gap on this side, same gap on this side. All right, y'all, I think we got it. Give this thing a final little tighten down. Check this out, man. Look how good this shuts down. Everything is lining up just right. Look at that. Just like that. I mean, you ain't got to slam it or nothing. A cool deal, man. We didn't even have to strap it to a tree and do all that pulling stuff or anything. That's kind of, you know, just what we would kind of consider a sheet metal pull. It's super easy. It's not like pulling a frame or anything super stout or anything. As long as everything's lining up, all your gaps are looking good. All of that, I mean, you should be good to go. So we are moving right along with the weird beard treatment. We got headlights that need to be buffed out. The hood's got to be finished up. And guess what, you guys? We got to head back out to the salvage yard. Yeah, that's right. Last time I was out there, I only found like one wheel and tire, and it, it wasn't even in very good shape. I ended up leaving it there. So this car has one good tire on it, just the one. All the rest are shot, and it's even got a spare on it right now. What do you guys say we head on out there and uh, see if we can't find something? We got two different yards that are only a couple miles apart from one another. And uh, we'll see between the two, hopefully we can find a set of decent wheels and tires for this thing. I would love to get some aluminum ones for it, but if not, not a big deal. We'll just get the original steel wheels and we'll throw on some good Walmart hubcaps like we normally do and she'll look fine. Okay, so we made it down to the salvage yard and today must be my lucky day because right walking in the door over here on the shelf was two tires matching that are in great shape. The exact size that I need and everything. Check them out. Got a couple prime wells here right on the shelf, man. We didn't even have to go pull them off or nothing or anything. So all I need really technically is one more tire. I thought we'd stop off and look at some of this stuff. Check it out. A 53 Oldsmobile Deluxe 88 pink. <laughs> Gotta love it. What is this, a Mary Kay car or something? I don't know. Boy, she did not hold up well at all as far as interior goes. Body didn't look like it was too bad of shape. You know, a little rust here in the dog leg, typical. The rockers look okay. Look at that. That is a clean rocker panel. I'm really surprised. Obviously, it was a different color. Kind of a turquoise. Anybody out there know what color that actually is? What it's called? I don't. Leave it in the comments, man. That'd be kind of cool. Oh, this G6 didn't fare out so well. Look at this. Oh, no. Oh, no. She got crunched, y'all. That's the wheels we need right there, but I think I'm going to go the cheap route because those tires suck, so I don't want to go through the trouble of dismounting those and then having to mount my other tires on it. There's not a whole set on there anyway. There's only three out of the four. We could probably find a fourth one somewhere, but like I said, these tires are terrible and uh, we will just end up having to mount the new tire, you know, our other tires over here onto there and that's gonna cost even more money, so I'll pass. Got an 04 Pathfinder. They shaved the door handles on or we're, we're in the middle of shaving the door handles on. That's not how you do that though, folks. You wanna put a, you wanna you want weld it shut and then do, you don't wanna just fill it full of mud. Found ourselves a little Nissan Pathfinder. Just so happens I need to get in here and grab me a couple of these clips off of these injector plugs for my daughter Kayla. If you guys haven't seen her channel, you are missing out. 
You guys need to go check out me, myself, and Darlene on YouTube. That is my daughter's channel. She's working on a Nissan hard body pickup and a, kind of a father-daughter project going on over there. And the other day, she was having some injector issues, so we put out a brand new video replacing the injectors. And I got to get some of these plugs, these little clips for the plugs, because she lost a couple of them. It happens. Hopefully, I won't drop these getting them off. There we go. Looks like I'm about to get one of them. Those things are kind of a bear. I mean, it's getting them off is bad enough, but then trying to keep from dropping them is what gets you. Now, here, we did manage to get one. That, that's what I'm after, these little things here. I only need a couple. Figured while we were here, we would check out inside. Uh, this is what I was thinking about doing on her truck. Get a couple of bucket seats and a center console with the automatic floor shifter. I wonder if that would solve her header issue. You guys leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Anybody's been following along know we've been having trouble getting a header on her truck because they guess they don't make one for an automatic. They're all made for stick shifts. So we're trying to figure out a way around it. She wants bucket seats. She wants a center console. So I thought, you know, if we could kill two birds with one stone, why not? I'm gonna have to let her know this thing is out here. Maybe she'll come and grab them seats up underneath here taking a look i honestly think this would solve her issue because look the linkage is over on the passenger side it's got a rod that runs all the way back here look at this the rod comes all the way back here for that floor shifter you can see over on the driver's side this is where her header would come down look at what's already in the way i mean they got all kinds of stuff going on here uh Looks like it, it feeds two into one and everything. I mean, that looks like more than enough room for her header to run down through here, having everything being over on the other side. That would be one hell of a modification, man. I think that would get us out of trouble. I'll be sure and let her know this is out here. And even if we don't get it off of that one, we could just keep that in mind and uh, maybe use that to solve our problem. We'll go find us another one to rob it off of. Damn, I need that rope hand right there for my F-150. Man, I did not bring anything to pull that off with you. It's even got a shaved tailgate. Look at that. See where it's starting to crack out, but I can fix that easy enough. Nice. Man, every time I come out here with no tools, I find a complete front end for that truck. <laughs> every time. But if I'm loaded down with tools, I can't find nothing. And it's been that way every time. I need this front end for my 91 F-150 I got at the house. And look, I mean, the whole thing. It's all right here, and I, I didn't bring the tools to pull it. Live and learn. Now, I thought we'd have ourselves a little debate here. I was considering swapping it out with this front end. This is the newer style. It'll bolt right up, because the doors and everything are the same. Uh, but it's got the newer style headlights and the newer style bumper, grill, and all that. And I thought about going that route instead. And it seems like I find these a little more common than I do the other ones anyway, so it might just be a the way to go uh you guys let me know man what do y'all think but i am definitely digging that roll pan well what do we got here an old nova get the straight six but it is a two-door and it just so happens to have my favorite all-time favorite wheels those right there i love them well i guess we got all we're going to get out of those what well, hell y'all i think we got what we need man that was easy enough let's get on out of here luckily today wasn't too hot this is actually a pretty pretty decent day a great day for picking and i just seen another s10 <laughs> no <laughs> what are they doing to you over there i hate seeing them good little trucks with nothing wrong with them in and up in here just because i guess people just don't want to mess with them damn shame We are out of here, man. Let's get back to the house, get this car done. You guys, y'all ain't gonna believe this, man. My prime wells, my sweet matching set of prime wells turned out to be a bust. We just got back from the tire shop trying to have them mounted and both of them, look at this, both of them ended up having holes in the sidewall. It looks like little knife wounds. You can't, you can't see them, I mean, you have to get in here and kind of pucker them out from the inside, but sure enough, look at that. Both of them's that way. God dang it. These were on the rack, y'all. 
These weren't out in the yard nowhere. They were on the for sale rack. They'd already been dismounted and everything. Should have checked them over a little bit better. I mean, they looked to be in great shape. I, mean, I felt around the inside of them. Nothing was poking through. Didn't look like it had any holes. No plugs, no patches, no nothing. And I was so damned excited. I just snatched them up. I should have looked them over a little better. It's my own damn fault. Anyway, we're going to head back and get some... Try again. Try to get some uh, tires. This tire thing's killing me, I swear. The worst part about it is it's holding up my reveal video. I wanted to get the wheels, the tires, the hubcaps, everything on it and, and show you guys the finished product. And now I guess I'm down a whole nother day. I can't wait any longer. I promised you guys closer videos. So it, this is where this one ends. I do apologize. Like we've mentioned before, that's the flip game for you. You never know what it's gonna throw at you. And here's just one of those deals, man. Perfect example of how anything can happen anytime. So, hey, I thought it'd be cool we go ahead and end the video here, but uh, I, I would show you guys some of my fan mail. I've been getting a ton of fan mail here lately. It's pretty crazy. Dude, look at all this. This is crazy. This is just this week. I've already gone through. I've opened it. Uh, kind of checking out what's going on. Lots of detail and stuff. Check it out. Man, we've got, look at this, a whole pack of all kinds of detail and brushes. Dude, that is going to come in so helpful. Let's see who this is. It says, hey Weird Beard, love the content, just watched the latest video and saw you cleaning the interior with a toothbrush. Yep, that's how we was doing it. So wanted to order these for you. Hope they come in handy. From Carl, jo Carl Jones. Man, shoot you. Yeah, they're going to come in handy. These things are freaking awesome. That's exactly what we've been needing, needing right there. Let's check this one out. We got some of those uh, cleaning pads. Uh, somebody's saying that uh, we should be cleaning our dashboards, our panels, door panels, all that stuff. These come in very, very handy. So, uh, cool deal there. What is this, a 25-pack? That's freaking awesome. Uh, Mike, I really appreciate your work. Here are some magic erasers. That's the appropriate name for them. Magic erasers, which work really well with all-purpose cleaner to clean your interior, plastic, and cars. Consider getting a steam cleaner, too. Man, I'll tell you what, a steam cleaner would be awesome. Keep it up from Stephen M. Jackson. You bet we'll keep it up. And it's gonna make it a lot easier with these right here, I'll tell you what. Let's check this one out, I forgot what this was. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, this one right here. More uh, detail and stuff, man. We got the little wash mitts. This has got all kinds of stuff in it right here. Man, our detailing work is gonna be so much easier thanks to you guys. Look at all these, these cleaning pads. Got the little the little brushes. Look at this. Even got the drill attach attachments, the brushes that go on there. And again, more of the little brushes that get in there and get all the little dust out of all the cracks and stuff. Man, really freaking cool. Damn, they even threw these in there. These come in very handy. I keep those around to clean my sanding blocks and stuff off with when I'm block sanding. So we'll be using those as well. This stuff right here is going to make my job so much easier, you guys. Let's see, here you go with some detail brushes for your next flip. Keep up the good work, buddy. From Bill Speck. Thanks, Bill. Very much appreciated. And like I said, that's going to definitely make my job a lot easier. Uh, let's see. Moving on here. Let's see what, what we got here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Check this out. I got one of these on the last round of fan mail as well. So now we got two of them. You can't have too much of this stuff, I'll tell you this there's a code reader. Let's see who makes OBD2 scanner 8001 from C Reader. Check it out, y'all. I think Launch makes it. That looks like that's gonna work out great right there. Let's see, did this come with a we got a letter in here? Let's see, what do we got? Alright, hey. From Mr. and Mrs. James C. Celia. Celia, I believe I'm saying that right. Thank you for providing such wonderful content on your YouTube channel. My wife and I enjoy watching your videos and are amazed with your patience and endless talent to your work through issues. Man, you guys are giving me way too much credit. I do appreciate it, though. You mentioned that mentioned that you lost your scanner, and I purchased one that I have not used that I am giving you in hopes that you could get some use out of it. Dude, that is too freaking cool, man. Yeah, Mr. and Mrs. James C. Celia. So, man, Jim, very much appreciated. Right, check it out. I'm, I'm going to show you all this, too, while we're at it. Why not? He sent me pictures of his man cave. Can you guys see that? That's pretty sweet, man. He's got it nice. Way nicer than this shack, I'll tell you that much. That looks pretty cool, man. Hopefully, we get this place all straightened out like that someday, because that's nice. I like that. 
Get out, Lee. It's got all kinds of, right off the bat. Look at that. Got some hose pliers. I've never had a pair of these, actually. I've always done it the, the hard way with the screwdrivers and the picks and all that, so this is gonna help us out. Look at this, y'all. A whole sleeve of masking tape. Man, how, dude, how many rolls are in here? Let's see, does it even say a 10 pack? 10 pack. That's pricey, dude. I know that for a fact. Whole box of Scotch Bright pads. Freaking awesome. Looks like another box right here. Dude, this is really cool. This, this is heavy, whatever this is. Look at this. This is full of tape. The whole thing. Probably another 20, at least 20 rolls of tape. Good Lord, this guy sent me 30 rolls of tape, y'all. Amazing, amazing. And I'll guarantee you I'll use every bit of it. From Bill Speck. Bill Speck again, dude. Good Lord, as if he didn't send me enough already. I can only imagine what that cost to ship. Like, what? What was it, $20 to send that probably? As if he didn't already fill it up with a lot of good stuff, he spent a good 20 bucks minimum to ship that. That means a lot, that does, it means a lot to me, y'all. Here we go, this is a big, look at this big old box here. We got, okay, we got a letter. Love watching your channel, keep up the good work from David Willis, Lincoln City, Oregon. Appreciate you, man, I got some love coming from the West Coast. Well, what do we got here? Plastic wrap. Oh, dude, a whole roll of plastic wrap. Shoot, yeah, look at that. A whole roll of this stuff. That's good, man, because I was using that old cheap stuff from Walmart. I don't recommend it. You gotta be super careful with that stuff because when you're painting on it, you come around for the next coat, you'll blow off all the overspray. It'll flake off into your paint. Very, very, very risky. I don't like doing it. This is 3M. That, that won't happen with this stuff. Thanks again, man. I feel like make a whole video just on fan mail this round. You guys really kicked it up. This is freaking awesome. Tack rags, look at here y'all. We got a couple boxes of tack rags. There we go. Freaking cool, man. We, we'll use that 15 pack each. So we got 30 tack rags right there. That will definitely come in handy. I hope they left a letter. Let's see, what do we got, what do we got? Yep, here we go. I love it when you guys leave letters, man. It's really cool, let's see. A uh, gift from Alfred Beecher. Enjoy your gift. In, in fact, I will. I will definitely enjoy my gift. <laughs> Here we are. I told y'all. Told y'all. You guys were kicking it up with the detail stuff. Man, I ain't gonna have no problem cleaning the next few cars. I tell you that much. That's, here we go. These are the drill brushes. It's got polishing pads. You name it, dude. I've got a little mini polisher that those should go right onto. So that's that's gonna work out perfectly. Let's see. Hopefully we got a letter in here. Yep, here we go. Let's see. A gift for you. I love your videos, man, but hate watching you clean the cars with a toothbrush. <laughs> you guys, that toothbrush actually worked out pretty decent. But yeah, you're right, man. This stuff's gonna be way better. These work great for taking all that <laughs> for taking all that shit right out of the carpet and seats. Yeah, I could imagine having that hooked to a drill would definitely make things a lot easier. Uh, a little easier on my elbows, man. We go all in with elbow grease on here, but I tell you, man, it gets rough sometimes. Just chuck it in your drill. Yep, you can use my name in your vids. All right, well, Jeremy. Oh, here we go. First time somebody tells me that I could actually use their name and I don't know how to say it. Jeremy Patrickwin? Am I saying that right? I know I'm not saying that right. All right, I'm stupid. Uh, Jer J Jeremy P, how about that? How about we just go with that? Very much appreciated, guy. Thank you, man. Uh, we are we are good to go on some detail. I'll tell you what. What do we got here? Uh... Oh, whole stack of sand. You guys don't know how cool it feels to open up these packages with these sleeves of tape and these stacks of sandpaper. Man, you're making my friggin' day right now. This has got, looks like 400 grit. Uh, from the looks of it, it's gonna be an assortment. Probably starting from 400, probably going all the way up to, it feels like, like 2,000 or something like that. Got me a little interface pad in there. It'll come in totally handy. I know I showed you guys, sometimes I'll use an old piece of scotch bright as an interface pad. And uh, look, this dude sent me one. Real freaking cool. What, what, what do we got here? Let's see. Enjoy, let's see, enjoy your gift. Thank you for the awesome channel. I hope these items come in handy in the future. From Al Beach. Al, again, what? This, 
Alfred's freaking awesome, sending me multiple gifts. That's the second one. Let's see what do we got here. Uh, more tack rags. Look at that. A whole freaking, a whole freaking deal of tack rags, y'all, to go with our thirty pack we already got. Now we've got what? What do we got? We've got twelve more. So forty-two tack rags. Good Lord of mercy. Just a little something to show my appreciation for your great content, Kevin Taylor. Very much appreciated, Kevin. Dude, that is awesome. So, Kevin sent us some tack rags. Alfred sent us some uh, sandpaper to go along with that other stuff he sent us. Dude, we are doing freaking awesome in the fan mail category. I'll tell you what, good lord. Y'all, y'all, man, y'all kicked me up. Look at this, more tack rags. Holy freaking crap. Love watching the channel. Keep up the good work from David Willis. Hey, didn't we open one a minute ago from David? Yeah, from Oregon. Man, that dude sits some love from Oregon, man. That is freaking awesome. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, it's pretty freaking exciting to, uh, it's like every day I'm going up the driveway and then I got a package up there from somebody, man. I mean, it's, it's, it blows my mind. I'm not used to it. Never had anything like this happen to me. So very much appreciate it. I really do thank you guys a lot. Uh, like I said, man, I got to leave y'all hanging on the video. I really need to get a video out to you guys. And uh, when we pick up on the next one, man, we'll get some tires on here, I guess. We'll go fix our screw up. And uh, anyway, please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Really do appreciate it. And uh, don't forget my my uh, Instagram, uh, link in the description, and Facebook, Weird Beard on Facebook. Hit me up on there. But hey, we're committing to getting videos out closer to you guys, so the wait won't be long. We'll get right back into it, and we'll show you guys how this is going to turn out. And uh, it's coming along good, though. I mean... On the bright side, it's all panning out. So anyway, I'll see you guys later, man. Thanks for watching. Good grief, I still can't get over all that. That's like a few days, y'all.